In Argentina, workers of the National Administration of Social Security denounced that the agency suffered more than 300 unjustified dismissals throughout the country. In the United States, former President Donald Trump won the National Republican primary elections in the state of Iowa. And in Palestine, more than 4,300 students have been killed by Israel since it began its genocidal operation against the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Argentina, workers of the National Administration of Social Security denounced that the agency suffered more than 300 unjustified dismissals throughout the country, while officials of the Ministry of Health The dismissed citizens were permanent employees who joined the agency between 2020 and 2023. The participants denied the justification for the dismissal expressed by the government, which affirmed that the dismissed were allegedly appointed without a previous selection process. On the other hand, workers of the health ministry demanded at its headquarters the payment of their overtime, which represents more than 50 percent of their earnings. All this in rejection of the deregulation measures taken by the government of Javier Milei against the working class. In Bolivia, legislators of the Department of Santa Cruz expect on Tuesday a response from the Department Departmental Third Constitutional Chamber after the claim that the temporary substitution of the imprisoned governor Luis Fernando Camacho be complied with. In a press conference, the head of the movement to socialism bench, Delphi Renteria, explained that this bench demanded the head of the jurisdictional legislative chamber and the vice governor, Mario Aguilera, to promote within 24 hours the substitution for the duration of Camacho's imprisonment, accused of terrorism for his participation in the 2019 COP. The highest executive authority of Santa Cruz has been preventively imprisoned since December 2022 in the maximum security prison of Chongcho Coro in the Department of La Paz. In an exclusive interview for Telesur, the Vice President of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, indicated that 2023 was a year of progress for the country thanks to the fundamental support of the Venezuelan people in the defense of sovereignty and the national union. The year 2023 was undoubtedly a year of progress, of progress in economic development, of progress in the political and social stability of Venezuela, and I believe that one of the fundamental pillars has been the national union, the spaces that were given to express the national union. And from that national union, which we saw in the overwhelming rejection of the Venezuelan people against the criminal and illegitimate sanctions, which we saw also in the national union express in the defense of the historical rights of Venezuela over our Guyana Esquiva, and that national union, President Maduro stands before the country, speaks to it with reality, speaks to it with support, with basis, speaks to it with the hope that the future means. The vice president said that despite the economic blockade imposed on the country, the people of Venezuela have remained loyal. The sanctions persist. The blockade of our financial resources persists. More than 22 billion liquid dollars, including the 32 tons of gold that are kept in the Bank of England proceeds. This reality has not changed, but in the context of this reality, the Venezuelan people have been able to assume a position, nor of crying, not a defeatist position, but a position where everyone has added their sacrifice, where everyone has added their commitment, their commitment to the country. The Venezuelan political leader also referred to the formulas implemented by the government to overcome the economic war faced by the country and how this will be maintained in 2024. As from February 1st, we will increase the SESTA ticket to $40 and the economic war bonus to $60. A very important increase considering that it is indexed. We maintain the audacious formulas that we are permanently monitoring. Why? 
what is it that interests us that when the workers is going to acquire goods, is going to acquire services, that money that he has as a product of his work, of his effort, is not lost. In Ecuador, social movements express their concern about the increasing level of militarization in the country. Through a joint statement, the organization World Beyond War and the coordinator for peace pointed out that the military measures imposed by Daniel Novoa's government do not favor a climate of security and that, on the contrary, they help to increase the levels of violence. They also demanded that national sovereignty be respected and that foreign military troops not, not be allowed to enter the country. Since last Tuesday, the executive declared a state of exception and of internal armed conflict following violent acts in prisons and streets on different areas. On Monday, former United States President Donald Trump won the National Republican primary elections in the state of Iowa. Citizens who went to the polls despite the low temperatures that hit the north of the country overwhelmingly chose Trump as their candidate. In this sense, with 96% of the votes counted, Trump received 51% of the support, while Florida Governor Ron DeSantis came in second with 21.2%. Donald Trump emerges as the favorite to lead the Republican Party in the November presidential election. It should be noted that the former president faces 91 criminal charges and four lawsuits, one of them for subverting the 2020 election. On the other hand, Trump is also facing efforts in more than 20 states to get him off the ballot. Democrat President Joe Biden recognized Monday that Donald Trump is the clear front-runner to be the Republican nominee to the U.S. presidential election. For his part, President Biden officially declared in April 2023 that he will seek a second term in the November 5th election. Current ruler owns the title of the oldest U.S. president in history and would be 86 years old at the end of a second term. Biden has used his first 2024 campaign speeches to warn that Trump poses a grave threat to U.S. democracy, citing his refusal to accept the results of the 2020 election and to condemn political violence. The Republican candidate, for his part, has criticized the president whom he has called the worst president in the country's history. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Thousands of people rallied in the Serbian capital of Belgrade on Tuesday to protest the alleged fraud committed by the President Alexander Bush's governing party during parliamentary and local elections last month. The rally was the latest in a string of protests following elections in December in, in which Bush's party said it secured a commanding victory. During the address to the crowd, the leading opposition figure Marinika Tepic also celebrated a decision by the European Parliament to discuss the situation in Serbia following the elections on Wednesday. The march comes just days after a Serbian opposition party formally lodged a complaint against an alleged fraud by Bush's party. Earlier Tuesday, a court rejected a complaint filed last week by Miograd Gavrilovic, a Serbian member of the parliament and vice president of the Democratic Party, who is also a member of the Serbia Against Violence Opposition Coalition. The move followed weeks of controversy that saw thousands take to the streets following accusations of official malfeasance during the elections. On Tuesday, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard attacked several positions of Mossad-linked terrorist groups in Syria and Iraq. According to official reports, the attack came after the Islamic Guard identified meeting points of the Daesh Takfidi terrorist group in occupied Syria. Iranian, Iranian forces reported a second missile strike against a major command center of the Israeli spy agency Mossad in the city of Erbil, located in the Iraq Kurdistan region. 
The Iranian army detailed that the operation showed the superiority of Iranian intelligence in the face of Tel Aviv's aggression in the region. According to local media, the facilities were camouflaged as residential villas with a double layer of concrete equipped with radars and listening equipment. The United Kingdom's Maritime Trade Operations Agency reported a new missile strike against a Greek cargo ship off the coast of Yemen. This, in a statement, the British agency reported that the vessel carrying dry bulk cargoes was attacked while transiting northbound in the Red Sea. They also detailed that the incident occurred 985 kilometers to northwest of Yemen. The entity also alerted vessels sailing in the area to do so with caution and to keep crew members informed about any eventualities that may occur. At the Afghanistan-Pakistan border crossing, thousands of trucks were blocked on Monday at the busiest border crossing. But the crossings between the two countries have been temporarily closed in recent months after Islamabad launched a massive operation last year against undocumented Afghans living in Pakistan and tightened documentation requirements for Afghans entering the country. The Torkham Hood the Torkham border crossing was closed to commercial vehicles on Friday night, border officials said, and as of Monday, some 3,000 trucks were stranded on both sides of the border. According to officials from both sides, Islamabad and Kabul were holding talks to solve the problem. Afghanistan shows in mid-January that it has hardly snowed at all, a new sign of the serious effects of global warming in this Central Asian country, usually familiar with harsh winters, according to experts. The exceptionally low level of rainfall in a country that relies heavily on agriculture forced many farmers to delay planting. According to the United Nations, already in its third year of drought, Afghanistan is one of the countries most vulnerable to climate change. Members of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization flew over the country in recent days from the southern province of Helmand to Kabul. A specialist noted that in the eastern provinces of Ghazni and Paktika, only a few centimeters of snow have fallen recently, and the mountainous province of Badakhshan has just seen its first flakes in this week. In France, authorities decre decreed an orange alert in at least 18 departments due to heavy snowfall after the arrival of freezing temperatures in the country. The French Weather Service launched an alert in response to forecasts that indicate that several events will begin to occur in various parts of the country starting this Tuesday night. In a recent report, weather authorities warn about the arrival of Depression Irene and its heavy rainfall in France in, coming, in the coming hours, a phenomenon that they warn will bring more snow and rain. In this sense, they call on citizens to be cautious and to respect the restrictions on vehicular movements. We have a second show break coming up, but before, Telesur invites you tonight to see our special interview to the Executive Vice President of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, on Telesur at 21 hour local time, 9 p.m. local time, Caracas time. Don't miss it, a special interview with Venezuela's Vice President. Final short break, don't go away. Welcome back. More than 4,300 students in Palestine have been killed by Israelis since it began its genocidal operations against the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. 
The Ministry of Education announced in a statement that 281 public schools and 65 schools affiliated to the United Nations Public Works and Relief Agency have been bombed. The agency indicated that 231 teachers were killed and more than 71 were detained in the West Bank. The teachers' union confirmed that the Israeli attacks on schools have affected 90% of school operations, preventing children from having access to education. During a humanitarian briefing on the war between Israel and Gaza held on Tuesday in Davos, Switzerland, at the World Economic Forum, the Secretary General of the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, Japan Chaka, Chapa Gain, gave some statements on the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip after 100 days of conflict. What we are seeing is uh, uh, the health uh, uh, care crisis, basically. The health facilities, a majority of them are not working, even the ones who are working face, uh, you know, power supply, water supply, medical supply. Also, the doctors and nurses have been overworking, uh, uh, you know, 24-7 in, in the early days. The water and food have been the other areas of major, uh, major, major constraint. I think the food, uh, I think you heard uh, a number of uh, uh, reports also saying that, you know, the, 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 you know, some reports of saying that starvation could be coming. Uh, and the water is, is, is a major thing, and I'm sure Kitty will talk about more in detail later. Uh, the, 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 the clean drinking water, uh, basic water, is, is, is a major, major, major issue. The serious humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip makes some of its inhabitants to manage to get money, to get food and water for the families. We brought solar energy panels to charge the cell phones. We charge a nickel for the recharge, so I can get some money for my expenses and to buy food for my children and my wife. I made these panels to help the people because our situation is very difficult, and we must support each other because we are the same people, one people. We are in a blockade. I got this idea because a man taught me, God bless him, he gave me the formula. He brought me the equipment and I brought the energy. He supported me and I did it. So I began and now I'm charging the cell phones to the people. I charge one cycle for each cell phone so I can survive. I am displaced from the Gaza Strip and we came from Kanjunis and from there we were displaced again to Rafa and well, an institution gave us tents, thanks God. I have to walk a kilometer to drink water and wash. The situation is impossible. Since we don't have electricity to have light and to charge our cell phones, we thought of these ideas and thank God we were able to do it. These panels are useful to charge batteries and to turn on a light bulb. It's good. With this energy, we're helping people to make their cell phones work in the absence of electricity. More than 130 Palestinians were killed after Israeli attacks in the last 24 hours in the Gaza Strip. Civilian targets continue to be targeted by the Israelis' international sources and in the inhabitants denounce that there is no safe place in Gaza. Likewise, for the fifth consecutive day, telecommunications have been suspended, which greatly interrupts the work of the international press, trying to show the truth of what the Palestinian people are going through after the wave of, of attacks and bombings by the occupation forces. After more, more than 100 days of aggressions, the death toll exceeds 24,000, mostly women and children. The Gaza Health Ministry, in its most recent report, states that the number of missing people is more than 8,000, while the number of wounded is over 60,000. The government of Greece reiterated its concern over the situation in Gaza and the escalation of the conflict in the Red Sea and calls again for a permanent ceasefire in the besieged area. 
The great foreign minister said that the country has consistently and systematically supported the creation of an independent Palestinian state to coexist peacefully with Israel. The top diplomat expressed that Athens is increasingly concerned about the loss of human lives, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, the conflict on the Lebanon-Israel border, and the situation in the Red Sea. In this regard, the Greek representative called on in the international community to take actions to ease the conflict and pointed out that they must all do what they can to provide food and medicine in the region. We have come, come to the end of this news brief, where you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.